All right, so that's the New York Stock Exchange. Was this J.P. Morgan's building here, Larry? Yes, it is. That's where the banks failed 2008, 2009. We have Bear Stearns, we have Lehman Brothers. You have to do some research to see the specifics on that. But a lot of it had to do really with the mortgage market. The, uh, it goes way back to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and, and uh, government uh, organizations, NGOs they actually were, that eventually became public uh, companies, publicly traded companies back in the 1960s under the Johnson administration. But what happened was those were became buyers of mortgages so that banks could then go back and lend to more people. So by being this uh, originally a government organization but eventually a public corporation, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, and they created the second one in order to have competition in the market, they were buying mortgages. However, those mortgages were backed by the full faith and credit of the U.S. government. That was really the problem because once you back them with the, the federal government, it meant no matter how bad the loans were, it was a guaranteed no loser. That's sort of like socialized capitalism, crony capitalism, where um, the uh, company gets to keep the profits, but they transfer the losses to the government. When they did that, that meant um, they're going to uh, they, they make them bad loans, risky loans. That's where the no doc loans came in. People were just being lent money. So um, it wasn't that capitalism failed, it's that crony capitalism failed, socialist capitalism. The socialized capitalism fails, and that's uh, no surprise in the market. You can't, you know, the free market only works with free information, and if you don't have that, the rating agencies, if, if it wasn't backed by the government, the rating agencies wouldn't have given AAA ratings. They had to give it a AAA rating. It was backed by the U.S. government. Well, it guaranteed not to fail. So it wasn't much of a risk, and that's, of course, why George W. Bush uh, in uh, 2008 did the TARP, because uh, Troubled Asset Relief Program, trying to um, shore up that market. So those people who were guaranteed winners would, would remain winners. Their investments were still sound, which of course destroyed the whole financial market. Um, Bear Stearns collapsed, I think, first, and then Lehman Brothers a few months later. So we had our own problems here in 2008. So I gotta tell you, Iceland had completely different problems that coincidentally were happening at the exact same time. So from Wall Street, we had to Reykjavik. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're here in, in Reykjavik, Iceland, which is really where the financial crisis of 2008 originated, believe it or not. Uh, what happened was, about 10 years earlier, early 2000s, they privatized their banks, which is not a problem at all, but it led to some cronyism, and it led to some massive uh, changes in the way they did business. A lot of Europeans treated Iceland as a place to store their money because the Icelandic banks were giving huge interest rates. So people were, money was pouring into this country. Now at that point in time, that meant the Icelandic kroner was overvalued. It was about 50 or 60 to the one US dollar in, uh, in about 2003. At that point, that fueled the economy here that influx of cash, they were giving out loans like crazy, people were buying um, a lot of European cars, lots of loans, lots of mortgages, so inflation happened, a lot of housing price changes, and in fact, most Icelandic people, um, their wealth grew by about 300% in those three years from 2003 to 2006. The stock market, the Icelandic stock market rose 900% in those few years at which point it all came crashing down. Now, the, uh, the corner being in the valley, was borrowing money in euros and at, say, a 50 or 60 to one, but suddenly it was 120 to one, you now had a hard time paying that back. So that led to a massive default, and the Icelandic government said, we are not supporting the people who, loaned, who gave money to the banks. We are not bailing them out. So that made a lot of Europeans, particularly Britain, very upset with Iceland. And uh, at one point, after the market crashed, the kroner was as high as 300 to 1 US dollar. Now it's stabilized at about 130 per 1 US dollar. 